Run. The Alien franchise has been out longer than I've been alive, and over the years it's had some hits, some misses, and some deeply average outings. We got the original trilogy in the late 70s and throughout the 80s with a haphazard resurrection with 1997's outing. The series lay dormant for over a decade until 2012's Prometheus which itself had completely upended the lore in the series. Alien Romulus follows from the lore of Prometheus, but did it provide anything new or novel to the franchise? And what the hell is up with those engineers coming up in every movie since Prometheus? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow and it's totally free. The Alien franchise is a seminal series in science fiction and horror cinema. Known for its intense atmosphere, groundbreaking special effects, and strong thematic elements. It began with the 1979 film Alien, directed by Ridley Scott, which introduced audiences to the terrifying xenomorph creature and set the tone for the franchise's blend of sci-fi and horror. And 2024 brings us the latest installment in this long-running franchise. But does it add anything new or innovative to the series? Let's go over the plot a little bit. In 2142, a Wayland yutani space probe retrieves a xenomorph-containing object from the wreckage of the Nostromo. Rain Carradine, an orphan works with her adoptive brother Andy, a reprogrammed synthetic, at the Colony Jackson Star. When her contract is forcibly extended by Waylon Yutani, she joins her ex-boyfriend Tyler and others on a mission to retrieve cryostasis chambers from a derelict spacecraft, hoping to escape to the planet Ibaga. The mission goes awry when they accidentally revive frozen facehuggers, triggering a lockdown. Rain installs a chip into Andy to help override the lockdown, unknowingly altering his loyalty to the company. As the group faces the revived Xenomorph threat, they struggle to survive. Navarro is killed by a chestburster, and the station's orbit becomes compromised, leaving them with less than an hour before collision with the rings of the planet. Kay, after being attacked by a Xenomorph, injects herself with a fluid called the Prometheus Strain, intended to perfect humans. In a desperate escape, Rain disables the station's gravity to fight the Xenomorphs and rescues Kay, but Tyler is killed. As they prepare to leave, Kay gives birth to a human Xenomorph hybrid, which kills her and injures Andy. Rain manages to eject the creature and places Andy in a stasis chamber before entering stasis herself, recording a log about their arrival at Ibaga. So how does this differ from the prior entries of the franchise? Well, the Alien franchise has roots that can be traced back to the cosmic horror tradition pioneered by H.P. Lovecraft, even though it doesn't directly adapt any of Lovecraft's works. Although Prometheus is in fact a very rough adaptation of the novella At the Mountains of Madness. Lovecraft's influence on the franchise is primarily seen in the way Alien taps into the themes of existential dread, the unknown, and humanity's insignificance in the face of a vast, uncaring universe. Lovecraft's stories often focused on humans encountering ancient, unknowable, and malevolent forces that exist beyond human comprehension. This idea is echoed in the Alien franchise, where the original crew of the Nostromo stumbles upon a deadly alien species with origins and motivations that are completely alien to human understanding. The Xenomorph is a force of nature, devoid of empathy or morality, much like Lovecraft's Elder Gods. This is what made the Alien franchise so appealing to me and millions of other fans. But then came the Dark Age of Cinema, where every movie needed to subvert your expectations and explain every origin story, even if the plot didn't need it. Movies in the last 15 years almost always needed to deconstruct existing paradigms, which is what has pissed off longtime fans of such franchises as Marvel, Star Wars, Star Trek, and countless others. For example, in Star Wars, the latest show The Acolyte attempts to deconstruct the Jedi as this malevolent force and got rid of what made Star Wars so good, the battle between good and evil. 
By introducing the engineers as the creators of humanity, Prometheus deconstructed the alien universe's lore by suggesting that the xenomorphs are not the central mystery, but rather a side effect of a much larger cosmic narrative. Much to the dismay of fans, this recontextualizes the alien universe, making the xenomorphs part of a broader story about creation, destruction, and the hubris of playing God. And as I mentioned before, this completely distances itself from the origins and inspiration of the franchise, the Lovecraftian cosmic horror. This particular subsection of the horror genre is particularly interesting with its depictions of the unknown. Creatures in Lovecraftian stories have mysterious origins and they simply don't care about good and evil. In a way, these stories transcend good and evil itself, which is what makes them so deeply rich and thought-provoking. By moving away from the franchise's Lovecraftian origins, the overall story becomes diluted and really not as special as it was. Alien Romulus follows from the story elements introduced in Prometheus, which many fans remain divided on for the reasons I stated. Having personally read quite a bit of H.P. Lovecraft, I was drawn to the Alien franchise because of its dark, uncaring atmosphere as I kept pondering the age-old question, why? Why were the Xenomorphs so fascinating and horrifying? Lovecraft often places characters in remote, isolated settings where they confront the terrifying realities of their own insignificance. This is mirrored in Alien, where the crew is isolated in the vast emptiness of space, facing a lethal threat with no hope of rescue. The setting of deep space, far from Earth, reinforces the Lovecraftian theme of humans being small and insignificant in the grand scheme of the cosmos. This was completely upended in Prometheus. A central element of Lovecraft's horror is the notion of the unknowable, the idea that there are truths about the universe that are so far beyond human understanding that to confront them would lead to madness. In the original Alien, the crew's discovery of alien life and the mysterious space jockey which was later explored in Prometheus, taps into this theme. The origins of the Xenomorph and the Engineers represent knowledge that is ancient, dangerous, and ultimately beyond human grasp. Although by introducing the Engineers, the franchise completely upended that deep sense of the unknowable. Way to deconstruct everything. The major problem with Alien Romulus is that it doesn't expand upon the lore in any meaningful way. While it was actually a nice throwback to see Ash from the original Alien film, his appearance didn't really move the plot forward in any way. Yes, we know the Whaling Corporation wants all these alien artifacts for their own nefarious purposes, but what else? Romulus actually started pretty interesting with labor relation issues faced by the workers of the Whalen Corporation. The beginning of the film also did a great job depicting that Blade Runner aesthetic and feel. After all, it's the same universe but did fuck all with it after that. What I did like about the film was how malleable the AI was in the androids. Andy, played by David Johnson, was nicely juxtaposed by the CGI Ian Holm. Their prime directives couldn't be any more different and really served as a warning against the real life pursuits of AGI or artificial general intelligence. It really all depends on the inputs. I first discovered David Johnson in the HBO series Industry in which he played Gus Sackey, a gay black Oxford graduate assigned to the investment banking division of a fictional London bank. I tell you, you could do that. Check the P&L, both trades make money. Did I tell you that you could do that? The difference in the performance between the movie and the show. The fucking thing's hunting us. Right, new plan. Can you manage yourself with the gun? Yes, I fucking can. Is Stark. Johnson does a phenomenal job in the role as Andy, the android in Alien Romulus. Come to think of it, he actually steals the show from all the other characters. I honestly couldn't tell you much about any of the other characters because they seem so uninteresting because the actors turned in bland performances. The primary issue with Alien Romulus, which makes it an average entry in the series at best, is the fact that although it continues off the plot elements from Prometheus, it doesn't do much in terms of exposition 
when it comes to the xenomorphs, the engineers, or even the xenomorph engineer hybrid we see toward the end of the movie. Since the film stars a whole bunch of Gen Z actors, I'm not really surprised that the output is so average. As the Gen Z kids say these days, the film was pretty mid. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like Alien Romulus? Or did all the stuff after Prometheus ruin the lore of the Alien franchise? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one!